Good morning, folks. We've got several items to cover today. An earthquake, cold records, a watery atmosphere on an exoplanet, cosmology, and the physics of big solar flares. But we are starting with space weather in the last 24 hours on our star. The last day was pretty quiet. We're getting closer to the next mini-cycle uptick, but things are relatively calm for now. We're paying attention for more sunspots incoming, but today we're more focused on these dark coronal holes and the thin, dark, snake-like plasma filaments around them. The filaments have remained fairly stable and show no signs of eruptive tendency just yet. Meanwhile, the solar wind enhancement from the coronal hole should arrive at Earth sometime between Sunday night and Tuesday morning, depending on how fast they actually are. Minor geomagnetic disturbance expected, but nothing major. Top seismic event of the last day was a 6.1 earthquake in Guatemala. It happened just after midnight, and they'll be doing a thorough survey at sunrise for damage and injuries. Cold Weather Report has a good one out on the records that were shattered over the last two weeks in North America. The same system that brought all the snow also plunged temperatures and several records have fallen. Up next, we're going to a watery atmosphere on an exoplanet. This one is a little bit bigger than the Earth, situated around a star 97 light years away. Hubble detected the presence of water vapor in the spectral returns during a stellar transit of the planet. But don't get too excited about a future Earth. This one orbits so close to its star that its temperature is a little closer to Venus than Earth. Not so hospitable. Excellent paper up next on galactic rotation curves. This field of science is slowly coming to the realization that their cosmology is off. From timelines to old galactic shapes to the lack of dark matter discoveries. Here, they're questioning whether dark matter would even explain the rotation curves of the galaxies. Veteran observers who saw our cosmology movie a few years ago probably remember that well. Last but not least, another paper here indicating that size of the Delta-class sunspot area determines its potential for major flaring. We just did the sunspot classification video a couple days ago. This paper confirms the importance of the magnetic mixing of Delta-class nature and how big of a mixing area is what determines flare power potential. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.